Beautiful people of God. So we're just going to continue back with the proud and the humble. Um, so Proverbs 28 and 25, he that is of a proud heart stirs up strife. So proud people stir up strife, but he that puts his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Now, 1 Kings 8 and 61, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statues and to keep his commandments as it is this day. So don't have a proud heart, have a perfect heart with God. Psalms 101 and 5, whosoever privily slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart, will I not suffer? When God says, I will not suffer, it means he will not suffer you to live. Him that has a high look and a proud heart, will I not suffer? Why? Because a high look and a proud heart is an abomination before him. Now, I have to read Job 33 and 13 and 18 so you understand this. Behold, it is... Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Yes, he is. Why dost thou strive against him? For he has, for he gives not account of any of his matters. For God speaks once, yeah, twice, yet man perceives it not. God shows them in signs and dreams and visions and wonders in somebody speaking to them, but they don't perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon man, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Why does God do these things to you? Show you signs and wonders, give you visions of the night, um, and and instructs you. Why? That he may withdraw man from his purpose and from your purpose, your you doing your will and not doing his will. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. To hide pride from man and to take you from your purpose, which is your, your own will, not his will. And to hide you from the pride, your pride, your own pride. That's why he does this. He keeps back his soul from the pit to keep your soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. That's why God does these things. That's why he warns you. That's why he instructs you. That's why he gives you visions and dreams that he may withdraw you from your own purpose and hide pride from you and keep your soul from the pit and your life from perishing from the sword, because those things happen to you when you're prideful. Psalms 119 and 69. The proud, proud people forge lies against people. That's why Proverbs, I mean Psalms tells you, the proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Psalms 119 and 17. Let, let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt per, perversely with me without a cause. So proud people deal perversely with people without cause but i will meditate in thy precepts that's why i said watch my video the spirit of pride and hauntiness because it tells you the spiritual warfare that how the spirit of pride and hauntiness attack people spiritually and through warfare now psalms 119 and 122 be surety for thy servant for good let not the proud oppress me so who is doing the oppressing people of god Proud people oppress people. They oppress the servants of God. Now, 1 Timothy 6 and 4 to 6 and 5. He is proud. Proud people know nothing. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, Preserve disputings of men of corrupt minds. So proud people have corrupt minds. They have strife. They have envy. They have railings and surmisings and corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Proud people are destitute of the truth because the pride of their continence, they will not seek after the Lord. And God is the God of truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. Proud people only care about their money. Supposing that gain, money gain, is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. So any people you think that put gain and profit in and money before anything, withdraw yourself from such people. 
Proverbs 13 and 10. Only by pride comes contention. So when does pride come? Um, contentions come? Only by pride. But with the well advised is wisdom. Psalm 73 and 6. Therefore, pride come past them about as a chain. That's why. Do you know some people's chains are chains of slavery, of their jewelry on their neck because of their pride in the spiritual realm? Therefore, pride can pass them about as a, as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Prideful people are violent. 1 Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yet all of you be subject one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. What? What kind of garments do prideful people have? They have garments of violence. Proud. You need to be clothed in the garments of humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Casting all your fears upon him, for he cares for you. O oh man, God showed you what is good and what and he, what he requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked through his pride of his continence will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. 1 Timothy 3 and 6. Not a novance, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Why? 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 Listen. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Remember, before pride comes a fall. And what it... And Satan fell by pride. And you're going to be in condemnation of the devil if you're prideful. Because that's what Satan loves is pride. He's prideful. His pride still won't let him repent to the Most High God. His pride never made him repent since he fell. He wanted to be as like the Most High God, which he can never be. Doctrine and Covenants 23 and 1. Behold, I speak unto you, Oliver. This is in Doctrine and Covenant. A few words. Behold, thou art blessed and art under no condemnation. But beware of pride, lest thou should enter into temptation. What You know why I brought this out? Of, God made me bring this out of Doctrine and Covenants. For you to know, when you're prideful, you're in condemnation of the devil. And 1 Timothy 3 and 6 proves, um, proves that. And that it's precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's why you're supposed to read many books, like God says in this word. And blessed is the man that read it. And walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right, one Timothy three and six. It tells you not a novence, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now, doctrine and covenants gives you more understanding about this in twenty three and one. Behold, I speak unto you, Oliver, a few words. Behold, thou art blessed and art under no condemnation, because if you're not blessed, you're cursed. I taught you that too. But beware of pride, this pride, lest thou should enter into temptation. He's under no condemnation because there's no pride in him. But that's why he tells him, beware of pride, lest he should fall into temptation. The devil, the devil, you'll fall into condemnation with the devil when you're prideful. Doctrine and Covenants 90 and 17. Be not ashamed, neither confound it. But be admonished in all your high-mindedness and pride, for it brings a snare upon your soul. What does pride do? Pride brings snares upon your souls. Doctrine and Covenants 98 and 20. For they do not forsake their sins and their wicked ways, the pride of their hearts and their covetousness and all their detestable things, and observe the words of wisdom and eternal life which I have given unto them. So God's saying, they won't forsake their sins and their wicked ways and their pride in their hearts and their covetousness and their detestable things and do and observe to do ob, observe the words of wisdom and eternal life which he gave unto them now proverbs 14 and 3 in the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride but the lips of the wise shall preserve them leviticus 26 and 9 so he wants me to talk about his punishments for pride people prideful people and the ones for in the last days the judgments like we are in the last days so leviticus 26 and 19 
I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. Alma 45 and 24. But they grew proud, being lifted up in their hearts, because of their exceedingly great riches. Therefore they, they grew rich in their own eyes, and would not give heed to their words, to walk uprightly before God, to walk humbly with their God. They made material things turn, them, turn away their hearts and their minds from God. Malachi 4 and 1, God wants me to read the judgments for the people of the proud in these last days. Malachi 4 and 1, for behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be as stubble, and the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So God wants you to know this. So I'm going to read it. Malachi, oh. Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. His word doesn't change, it doesn't return to him foy. But if, Matthew 18 and 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two, take with thee one or two or more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So in the mouth of two or three witnesses, God's word will be established. So Malachi tells you this, Nephi tells you this, and then the prophet in Doctrine and Covenant tells you this about the proud judgment, which I'm going to finish reading. I just He just wanted you to know that, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, so if the same thing is in two or three books, then the statement is true. Now to Nephi 26 and 4, wherefore all those who are proud and do wickedly, that day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, for they shall be as stubble. So Malachi tells you this, Nephi tells you this, Doctrine and Covenants 64 and 24 tells you this, for after today comes the burning. This is speaking after the manner of the Lord. For verily I say, tomorrow all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be as stubble, and I will burn them up. For I am the Lord of hosts, and I will not spare any that remain in Babylon. Now this is it, in Doctrine and Covenants 29 and 9. For the hour is nigh, and the day soon at hand, when the earth is ripe. Remember, the reapers, when the world is ripe, it goes with the word of God. God doesn't change and his word doesn't change. And all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be as stubble. And I will burn them, says the Lord of hosts, that wickedness shall not be upon the earth. So that's what God tells you in Micah 4 and 1, in Nephi 2, the second book of Nephi, chapter 26, verse 4, and Doctrine and Covenants 29 and 9, right? And Doctrine and Covenants 1, 33 and 64, and it also mentions Malachi. So, and also that which was written by the prophet Malachi. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Even Isaiah talks about um, let them, letting them be burned up, leaving them neither root nor branch. Um, beautiful people, Malachi 3 and 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacobs are not consumed. God's word doesn't change. His word doesn't return to him void. And the punishment for proud people, he will burn them up. That wickedness shall not be upon the earth. And beautiful people, take this up with God. And I'm going to leave at the bottom of my video um, the spirit of pride and haunting,ness the videos I made for God for you people, um, and the spirit of humble, having the humble spirit. Um, stay blessed. I hope this helped you. And happy Sabbath. May God continuously bless you, continuously protect you and your families and your households and your marriages. Stay blessed.